So to use WebEx, you need to go to a web browser and go to webex.com. And if you haven't already, you will need to set up an account uh, using your education login. So if you've already done that, you can click sign in and go to WebEx meetings. Here is where you will need to put in your email address. And it will take you to this login screen, which will determine that you are connected to EduPass. So it's the security layer that allows you to use WebEx. So when you are in your personal room, you can schedule a meeting to take place. And it's easier with all your different classes if you schedule that meeting and call it, so I have year nine English. Um, the password you can change so that it's a word that they could connect to your subject area. Um, you can have any word that you like there. You can set the date and the time of the first time that you have that class. However, it doesn't matter when you reactivate that class. So it might say Tuesday the 28th of July at 12.30, but I could open it next week and it would still work and be usable. Um, you can make it recur weekly, daily, however often you have that class. Um, you can choose when to end that, if it's at the end of term. And then click schedule. There are some advanced options to be aware of. If you want the students to log into Webex and set up an account, which I don't recommend, um, if you allow them to join before you, that means that they can be in there talking to each other unattended. So I would unclick that one. You can turn off if you don't want them to be able to chat when they're talking. If you don't want them to see who's in there, you can change who's chatting in private chat so the students can chat to each other without you knowing. So if you turn that off, they won't be able to private chat with anyone else except for you. So there are some other things in the advanced options that you might want to have a look at and click schedule. And now you've moved over into your meetings over here and this is your meeting information. So to share that with students, you would then copy. So I've copied that invitation now. I'll go over into my Google chat and I would find my 9C English class and I would paste that in there. So the students get all of this information, which they don't need. So I delete what they don't need to see. And I would send them that. And when they get that in Google Chat, they would click on the link, just like we do for our Google Meets in the morning, and it would send them over into WebEx. So if I now start this meeting, it's asking me to open Cisco, which it will do for the students. So now I'm in my WebEx and now the students can join and when they join, we'll see them just like we normally would. When you go to share content, you can share different websites. There is one that says whiteboard. It does not work from a laptop. Students who have iPads and iPhones can use it, but students with laptops cannot. And so therefore it's not good to use in our mixed uh, device setting so I do not recommend that you use that. It also doesn't tell you which students are contributing to the whiteboard so if someone's doing the wrong thing you actually can't tell who it is. Uh, so I don't recommend doing that. However if you share things in Google Chrome so I'm now sharing Google Chrome so if I have a look at this one 
So this is one activity that I did with students in slideshow. Um, I had highlighted the negative, the yellow and the green at the top here, but all these words inside were blank. So I had the students come in and we discussed which words had negative connotations, positive connotations, negative tones and positive tones and why. So as a group, we were having a conversation, but students were individually able to go and highlight the words in the color. And students could also then argue against that or say that they disagreed. So you can see some of these words have three different colors depending on the viewpoint that different students had. Another way to use this is in another slideshow that I had. So students were looking for the different types of persuasive techniques in this text. So you can see here that Jesse has highlighted the word seriously um, and he's written that the tone is positive. So then I've questioned him in a comment reply, but also then had that conversation with students at the time. Uh, Mokhtar, you can see that he's highlighted words. So as you hover over the comments, you can see what the student thought of and who the student was. And then on another slide, I've highlighted the comments and the students then had to reply underneath my comments as to which technique, technique they thought that was. So as you go down, you can see which students have replied and which students are participating in the conversations. When you do these activities, some students just like to watch. So when you share the link to this, um, so you click here, share, uh, copy link, and then into, done, go into the chat and you paste it into the chat. And then all of the students can click on that link and access the document, making sure that you've got your link sharing set to let them edit. Then if a student is not in the chat when you paste that in, they won't be able to access it. So if you have any students joining late, you may have to share that link several times or you can share it in your classroom, but then it does mean that they can access the link before you want to use it with them. Another thing that I've done with students is use my Google Maps. So on this map, students were to um, find a location and then find a text that they felt was persuasive and add that text into um, the map uh, with their name so that you can see who it is. Uh, I was able to put some example ones in so you can insert videos. Uh, this one is the Alcoa factory. So then you can have a conversation with students as they're working, as they're copying and pasting things in as to why they added in the different things that they did. And then it can become a group conversation as well as an individualized conversation. When you have finished sharing and you send your students off to do the work that they need to be done, uh, I would leave my WebEx open so that as students were working, if they had questions that they wanted to ask, they could come back into WebEx. So if you're online and available for that hour, they know that that's when they can come back and ask questions. You can also create a poll. So if you have a question, um, how did you go with today's task? So we can add an answer really well. I understood it all and you can open the poll because I don't have anyone in here. So students will then get that come up in their chat screen and they'll be able to choose A, B or C and as they fill that in you'll be able to see how they went with that. You can ask other questions, you can include um, quizzes on the content specifically, that kind of thing. Um, the poll generally lasts for five minutes. Um, you can see detailed status, that kind of thing, and then close the poll when you finish with it. You can share the poll results with everyone if you're doing something that they want to see or need to see the answers to. Um, so the polling is quite useful as well, to, just to track how your teaching is going and how the students are going with it all. Hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you. And if you have any troubles with WebEx and need a hand, feel free to email me. Happy to help.